Friction. Oh, Tom Thomas, that door of yours squeaks terribly. Yeah, and it's not easy to open either. Well, that's because the hinges are rubbing. That's why your door is not working right. How can I fix it? Just reduce the amount of friction. How? With some oil on the hinges. I can do it for you because I've got a pack of mat. All right. Can I help you? Sure you can. Wear the pack mat all right? Friction is the force that tries to stop something from sliding or rubbing smoothly against something else. Rubbing can make things wear out quickly if there's a lot of friction. If you want less friction, you need to put something on the parts that rub against each other, like oil. There are special kinds of grease used to keep clocks and wheels turning smoothly. And for skis, a special kind of wax can be used to make them go even faster. That's it. Now the top hinge. It's all done. Go ahead and check how it's working. It's not squeaking. I told you. You guys are the best. I gotta go. Go where? I'm gonna go sledding. Maybe you'll take me with you? Uh, sorry, Nolik. You don't have a sled to ride on. I'll see you later. Simka, should I grease the saucer? What for? It'll slide down the hill just the way it is. Ah, okay then. <gasps> um, wait here for me, Nolik. I'll be back real soon with a surprise for you. Yeah, oil slippery. I know what I'll do. Hmm. Wow! Talk about no friction! Are you all right? Just stay where you are. I'll be right there. Papus! Papus! Help us, please! Who called for me? Help is on the way! Hey, what are you up to? Grandpa, stay away from here! You'll fall over! Hey? What did you say? Stay where you are! Uh, uh, uh. What happened here? I poured some oil on the table. Why'd you do that? To reduce friction. That's brilliant. Nobody move. I know exactly what to do. <gasps> What was the problem you had with the friction? I want to see all of this oil gone in five minutes. Huh. Engineers are in a constant battle with the force of friction. They want less friction so that cars will run faster and their parts will wear out less quickly. But just imagine what the world would be like if all of a sudden there was simply no friction at all. Everything would start slipping out of our hands and falling off the table. Knots would untie themselves, and that's not the half of it. Cars wouldn't be able to run without friction either. Wheels would spin around and around in one place, unable to grab onto the road. We wouldn't even be able to walk. Because when we walk, we move forward by pushing off the ground with our feet. And how can we do that without friction? We can't. So now I think you can see why it's not so bad to have a little bit of friction in our lives. Whew. 
We cleaned it. But it's still so stinky. <gasps> no, like, I completely forgot. I promised you a surprise. Look! What is it? I made you your very own saucer for sledding. Oh, that's great! Only, what good is this thing without snow? Nolik, hey! Look what I've got for you! Snow? Yeah. Is it real snow? Really? Yep. Now you've got your very own hill to sled on. This is great! What an awesome surprise! And you don't need oil to make it go quickly. Simka Nolik, what you doing here? We're not Simka Nolik. We're courageous pirates. Yeah, pirates. And today we leave home for the sea. Are you with us? Yes, I am. Hooray! You mean no? No hooray? Oh, yeah. You can't join us without a test. Go and find a special thing. Something no sailor should ever sail the sea without. I can do it, but how? with a map, and it's over there. <laughs> I've never seen a map that's this puny. What are you talking about puny? That took us a half hour to make. From where you're standing now. Uh-huh, from here you mean. I guess it right. First head to the north until you will find... Hold on, but where's the north? It's where the North Pole. Ice and polar bears are. But how do I know which direction the North Pole is? By compass, of course. A compass is a special tool that helps sailors and pilots know in which direction they're traveling, whether in the air or on the sea. Our planet is like a big magnet that has two poles, the North Pole and the South Pole. These magnetic poles help the needle in the compass find its way. The needle is magnetized, so one of its ends will be attracted to the north magnetic pole and point at it, while the other end will always point towards the south. That I know, but there's no compass around here. Then let's make one by ourselves. Out of what? We can use a needle. We just have to magnetize it. And how's it supposed to turn around? In a saucer of water. pointing in the direction of north and the other to the south. But which point's where? Well, there's the window, so that can't be the right way. The north is there. I'm really liking this sharp little fella we've got here. You calling me a little fella? No, it's just the way us pirates talk. All right then, north we go. First head to the north until you see a sleeping monster. Ladies ahoy! Monster on the horizon! Let him do it himself. He... <laughs> hmm. Now turn to the left and go 300 paces more. 300? Exactly! I counted on myself! Uh-huh. Okay, then that means I'll go... One, two, three. Now straight ahead until you get right up to the giant tree. <laughs> you call that a tree? Wow, amazing! I can't believe my eyes, it's a real ship compass. It's also called a marine compass. The first compass was invented more than a thousand years ago in ancient China. With its help, the Chinese were able to travel across the desert. 
And about 200 years later, the compass appeared in Europe. Whether the Europeans came up with the idea for the compass themselves or took it from the Chinese isn't clear. But one thing's for sure, we fixies remember how those early compasses were built. The first compasses were made with a magnetized needle on top of a floater inside a bowl of water. Later, the needle was put on top of a pin that let it spin freely, and it started to look like the ones we use today. Since the needle of a compass always points to the north, a sailor can easily figure out which direction he needs to turn his ship. If he wants to go north, he follows the needle north. If he wants to go south, he goes in the opposite direction. Your dad brought it home with him late last night from his work. You were asleep. Hold on. I want to check something. What's up? Yeah, they line up together. Of course they line up. If not, how else would you have gotten here? We're done with the needle. It has to go back. First head south, 600 paces. Six for you, matey. The remote. Hey, Simka, the button got stuck on the remote. How can we get it back out of there? Look and learn, Nolik. Please help. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, oh, oh. Should I let it go now? Oh. Oops. <laughs> no, like, hide somewhere. <laughs> She stole the remote. Nolik? Where are you hiding? Nolik? Hello there, fixies. Hey, where are you? Hey, Tom Thomas, you got here just in time. Chusaka ran off with the TV remote. And so what? I can turn it on without it. And my favorite cartoon is just about to start. Forget about the cartoons, will ya? Nolik is missing! I'm afraid Nolik hid inside of the remote. And Chusaka took it. Oh, no, no, it's in big-time trouble. Tom Thomas, there must be something you can do! Chusaka, Chusaka, come here. Where is that dog hiding? I'm gonna go look in the other rooms. Simka, Tom Thomas, here I am. I'm over here. For now, I'll wait here. Chusaka's not out there. Where are you? Hey, Simka. I ran to get a pack a mat. What are you gonna do with it? I'm gonna search for the infrared ray that comes out of the remote. That's so great. But what is it? I'll explain it to you. Inside of most remote controls, there's a special type of light bulb called a light emitting diode, or LED for short. When we press a button, the LED sends an invisible infrared ray. And in the TV, there is a receiver for these invisible rays. The TV understands the command that comes from the remote control and carries it out, like changing the channel or the volume. If the rays are invisible, then how is it possible to see them? In the pack a mat I've got these special goggles that can help me. And now what? Yell to Nolik. Get him to close the contact on any one of the buttons. Nolik! You gotta push one of the buttons down on the remote. A button? But how am I gonna do that? Wait, one second. Chusaka Chusaka with a brain full of rush. Nothing for you here. But here's something. There he is. He's over there. Chusaka, come here. Do you want a hot dog? So you want to play tough. All right, then.
looking out for the remote's rays. It's just a shame it's impossible for me to see him. What are you saying? You can! If you want to see infrared rays, all you have to do is look through a digital camera. Try it for yourself. Turn on the camera on a mobile telephone. Now go ahead and press any button on the remote control and point the camera toward the front of it. You'll see a bright dot on the screen of the camera. That's the light emitting diode working. It's letting off a special light that can't be seen by the naked eye. It's also possible to point the remote control at a mirror. And then through the camera, you can see how the light emitting diode turns itself on. So what that means is that invisible rays bounce off of a mirror in the same way that regular light does. So you can control the TV by bouncing the light from a remote control off of a mirror. You don't believe me? Then go ahead and try it yourself. By the way, if your toys weren't all stuffed under the bed, we would have found the remote without the goggles. Don't worry about it. When the cartoons are over, I'll put them away. So, you done watching? Time to clean up. <laughs> <laughs> the Shadow Play. Oh, hi there, Tom Thomas. What are you doing here? Uh, I dropped a paper clip. Give me some light. Huh? We're trying to help you out. <laughs> You've got funny shadows, that's what. Hey, check this out. <laughs> <laughs> it's an eagle. <laughs> and Simka is a goose. <laughs> she looks more like a moose. I do, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, and take that. <laughs> oh. You're like real actors performing in a show. Uh huh. Actors play in a theater, you know, and we're just under a bed. And so what? <gasps> How about we make our very own theater? A theater with shadows. Class! Tom Thomas, we need a, a piece of paper, a huge sheet. <laughs> it's really quite easy to make your own shadow theater. You can make the screen out of a white sheet or a big piece of paper. Next, make sure the room is dark and shine a desk lamp at the screen. Now, to make the shadows, just put yourself or a cardboard cutout between the lamp and the screen. Your shadow or the shadow of your puppets will come to life. But make sure that the audience sits on the other side of the screen. The play will be much more magical for them from that side. Tom Thomas, light! Oh, wow! Simka, you look totally like the real Red Riding Hood. Hello, dear granddaughter. Hello, dear grandmother. Grandmother, what very big eyes you've got. The better to see you with, my dear. <laughs> no, like, come on, we're rehearsing. <laughs> the wolf's voice is funny. Grandmother, I never noticed what very big teeth you've got. They're so much better to eat you with, my dear. Yum, 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 yum. Let them out, wolf. Or I'll, or I'll get them out blow myself. Ha <laughs> ha, you'll stop me with that little stick? Hey, that's not in the fairy tale. But in the fairy tale, it's a normal hunter. And what do you think I am? Look for yourself. You're way too small to be the hunter. Fine, then go to your play without me. Well, I guess I'll have to make the hunter out of paper then. That's all. Take a break. I'm really thirsty. She was so salty, that grandma. No, Lick. Don't be upset. The wolf is huge, and I'm so little. Then let's make you bigger. You see? Now you're bigger. Yeah, you're right. And if we go back here, then I'm even bigger. Now you know. If you go back here near the lamp, your shadow will get bigger on the screen. Class! There are just so many different kinds of theaters in the world. In the dramatic theater, the actors speak the lines of the playwright. At the opera, the actors don't speak their lines. They sing them, accompanied by an orchestra. And here at the ballet, the performers don't speak or sing their parts. Here, the story is told with dance. There are also theaters where the performers are animals. 
In an animal theater, you can watch performances by cats and dogs, or goats and pigeons, or even bears and seals. There are also theaters where the stories are told by puppets. To tell the truth, the puppets are brought to life with the help of people. Yes, there are so many different kinds of theater. My favorite is the Shadow Theater. I think it's the most beautiful and mysterious theater of them all. Hello, dear Grandmother. Grandmother, what very big eyes you've got. The better to see you with, my dear. And Grandmother, what great big sharp teeth you've got. All the better to eat you up with, my dear. Um. Ooh, just wait. Aha, Wolf, I got you. The hunter looks so strong. You're a hunter? Then where's your gun? Why do I need a gun? You're so tiny I could use a fly swatter. <laughs> but I'd rather do it like this. Like what? With my bare hands. Way to go! <laughs> 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 Your favorite. Mine was the grandmother. Well, I think Red Riding Hood was the best. For me, the hunter. He was so mighty and so fearless. And for me, the special effects. <laughs> the team. The first period is almost over. Tom Thomas's team is leading to nothing. There's no getting around the difference in class. Simka! Nothing. And that's the end of the period. Time for the teams to take a break. This isn't a fair game. There's six of these guys and only two of us. Uh. Go ahead and call your classmates. I'll still outscore you. You sure about that? Uh-huh. Well, Tom Thomas, you asked for it. Young Fixies take classes and study just like human kids. But Fixie schools are quite a bit different than schools for people. To begin with, there are no more than ten students in a room. In Simka's class, for instance, there are six, and the children don't study in one place. On one day, the lesson could be inside a refrigerator, the next day in a computer, and the day after that in a vacuum cleaner. This is the best way for Fixies to learn all about them and put their new knowledge to the test. But the most important thing is that they have to learn to work as a team and help each other. Stronger Fixies helping weaker ones, and older Fixies helping younger ones. This is a must for Fixies, because appliances are so very big that if we didn't work as a team, we little Fixies could never get by. As the second period is about to begin, our full team comes to the ice! Huh? Introducing the engine of our class, fire! My motor's roaring! And now the brains of our class, Digit! Okay, what's the score? Now here is the spirit of our class, Tula! Could I be our goalie? <laughs> and here she is, the face of our class, Verda! And oh, what a cute one. So you want to quit, Tom Thomas? I'm not afraid of you. I'm calculating the angle to use. Whoa! <laughs> Oops! <laughs> Pass it quick! Ugh. Quit sleeping! If you're gonna scream at me, I'm not going to play at all. Wow, that's some team you got there. <laughs> ah! Six nothing! Oh. It's a blowout! Now the intermission before the final period. We're missing something here. I can tell you what. You mean confidence? Uh, calculations? Elegance? I know, speed. What's missing here's teamwork. Simka, you're right. It's one for all and all for one. Then here's what we're gonna do. We got it. Check, don't lose control. A line change on the floor. 
fly The puck is zooming towards the goal To score and break the tie It's one for all and all for one Great teamwork is a must Let's go and show them how it's done This game was made for us Hockey's our game get creamed like that. Cause you're by yourself here and we are a team. Team! The Wires. Quiet down. Get ready for your lesson. Be quiet. Quiet down, please. Oh, it's so hot here. In today's class, we'll learn about... Whoa, what was that, huh? It must have been an earthquake. Yeah, it was an earthquake! Hooray! Eh, sorry there, Professor. Ooh, I have to find an outlet so I can plug in this fan. Ooh, it feels terribly hot. It sure does. Well, keep looking. You'll find one. <coughs> now then, where was I? Oh, right. Today? Oh! No, it's impossible. In this whole laboratory, there isn't one free outlet. Look at this. Just pull out one of these wires, and then you'll have a free outlet. I can't. <laughs> I fear I could pull out a plug for something important. Ah, uh, Volt himself would get all tangled up in these wires. Whew. Don't worry about it, Professor Eugenius. We'll find a free outlet for you. That's right, my colleague. A cup of tea will do you good, so just go relax. Thank you, my colleague. And as always, I'm eternally grateful. Pixies have opened schools for their children in all sorts of different places, like factories, stores, and warehouses. Anywhere where there's lots of machines and appliances and places to hide from humans. And this is where we hold our school, right here inside the laboratory of Professor Eugenius. It's a fantastic place for me to hold class. Every day, new devices, materials, toys, and even food are brought here for examination. And there are lots of scientific devices and tools to study here as well. But most importantly, we never need to hide from the head of the laboratory. Because my colleague, Professor Eugenius, is someone I'm proud to call a friend. He loves Fixies, helps us anytime we need, and will never let our secret out. What should we do first? We have to start out with pulling apart these wires. <laughs> That'll take a second. Here. No, like, come help. Let's do this. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Just one more time. Stop it. I can't get out. Loosen the wires. We need to pull out this one. Stop this nonsense, will ya? Thank you, Digit. Tiddish. Well, the way I see it, in order to get the knot out that's over here, we need to expand the loop that's over there. And then push that wire through it. And then do it again from the other end. Yeah. That's it. Very good, girls. Hey! Now pull it hard. Perfect. Hey, check it out. The screen wire up here isn't plugged into anything. Then no one's using it. So that means we should go and pull it out from the outlet. Got it. Oh. <laughs> Vera, here's another wire that isn't plugged in. I found another wire no 
one's using... Oh, uh, I mean, Simka and I found it together. Nolik, why are you so upset? Because you guys are doing all the work. How about this wire? Nobody's checked it yet. Really? Oh, wow! What? Did you find some treasure, Nolik? Uh-huh. There are six free outlets under here. Great! Now Professor Eugenius can plug in his fan, and his kettle, and even his soldering iron. To get electricity to a device that doesn't use batteries, you need to plug a pair of wires into an outlet. But it's important not to let the wires touch one another, or the electricity can burn them out. That's why wires are covered in plastic or rubber, so the electricity won't pass from one wire to the other or to us when we touch them. So always be very careful with wires. And never, ever touch a bare wire. You could get killed by the electric shock. Oh, what would I do without my wonderful friends? Thank you. Ah, sorry. I just, I didn't, I wanted to. Eh. I should go. Go ahead. That's a great idea. And we'll start our class. Uh, what were we talking about? All about wires. Well, it looks like our class is over. Time to go play. Tubes. Today's lesson will be on pipes and tubing. Right here inside of this laboratory, you can see them all over. Look! Over there. And there. Some more over there. And there's another one. So, who can tell me some different uses for tubes? Digit. Uh, They're used in plumbing to carry the water. No, like, in school, we don't give an answer without being called on. Digit. You can. And for carrying waste. I am talking to Digit now. Gas goes through pipes, too. Stop interrupting us. And don't forget about smoke in a smokestack. No, like, that's just rude behavior. Out right now. All right. And a shower hose. That's also a tube, right? I told you to get out. Yikes. And a vacuum cleaner's got one, too. Hmm. And those spy glasses that pirates use when they're sailing. Hey, what do you say we all go and sneak out of here? Great idea. Let him call out to himself. Shh. And a trumpet's a tube that you blow through. <laughs> Nolik is my younger brother. There's a lot he still doesn't know, but that doesn't stop him from getting involved in things he probably shouldn't. Unfortunately, that can get him into trouble. So, every once in a while, me or my parents have to rescue him. No, I wouldn't call Nolik a pest. He's just a bit curious. That's why he broke the number one fixie rule, hide from humans. Nolik's the one who first became friends with Tom Thomas. Well, I was there too, but Nolik started it. Actually, <laughs> first it was Grandpus. Many years ago, he befriended Professor Eugenius. And after that, the professor let us have our school in his laboratory. So it turns out that Nolik is just like his grandfather. Digit, go on then. Tubes are, uh... Wow! Just look at all the tubes in here. There's rubber ones and glass ones that are curvy. Oh, yeah! Pens! Parts of them are tubes, too. Ugh. Um... <laughs> he stopped talking. He ran out of ideas. <sighs> and those tube slides at the water park. <laughs> the barrel of a rifle and the shell of a bullet. Those are tubes. Oh, there's a tube with a serious crack. And it's also dripping and hissing. It's dripping? Where? How can I show you when you kick me out of class? <laughs> What's going on? Take a look. That tube up there is leaking. <gasps> That's acid dripping out. Is that dangerous? It's awful. Any second now, it'll 
explode. <gasps> Where did Professor Eugenius go? He went to eat a sandwich. So what do we do? It's a disaster. Don't panic. Fire, Verda. Go to that hose and shut off that valve. Simka, go get a pack of mat. We'll fix this pipe ourselves. It's very important to be sure that a pipe won't leak. But making pipes that won't leak isn't so easy. Pipes can be made by rolling up a sheet of metal and sealing it up. Unfortunately, the seam can break. And that's why people have figured out how to make pipes without seams. They do it by stretching out hot metal on special machines. And PVC pipes are squeezed out of hot plastic like pasta. When the plastic is cooled down, it hardens into a pipe. We fix it just in time. Know it. Way to go there. Hey, Simka, where is he? Don't know. Heh, <laughs> he finally left. Here I am. Nolik, I want to thank you for being alert. And I'd like you to join our class. Teddy! Only don't forget, in my class, students cannot answer unless they're called on. Now then, pipes and tubing. Digit, please continue. Well? But Nolik said all of them already. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, not all. A straw for drinking a shake is a tube, and some noodles are tubes made out of dough. And what's it called? Uh, that thing. A hole in a mountain. Wait a second, I'll get it. A volcano! That's not it. They go this way. I mean the kind that go like that. <laughs> They're tunnels! You got it! Well done there. Yeah. The video call. Turn on the camera right away. It's me, Simka. Just as I expected. Nolik, why aren't you in school? School? It started? No, but you'll be late if you don't hurry. I'm on my way. Simka, is that really your fixie school? Um, well, actually, it's the laboratory where Professor Eugenius works at. He lets us have our school here. Who's that, Simka? Look. Is that the professor? Where? Oh, come on, Tom Thomas. That's the manipulator. Who? Not who. What? It's a mechanical arm. For real? Oh, please show me some of the other things you've got. But how can I show you? Come on, with the camera. Computers and tablets are able to connect with one another through the Internet. That's why you can talk to another person on your computer like you're talking on the phone. And if the computer has a video camera, then it's possible to send not only sound through the Internet, but video as well. That's why it's called a video call. With video calls, it's possible to talk to your friends, to see them, and to show them all the things you can see yourself. All right, take a look. <laughs> Over here we have uh, chemistry equipment. Uh, and over here... Hey, Tom Thomas. It's good to see you. Wow, you flew there so fast. Nola, get out of the way. You're blocking the view of the lab. I am not blocking the view. Stop it. Go away. You go away. You go Tom Thomas. What are you watching? Uh, is it time to turn into screws? Too late. He already spotted us. It's just a cartoon about these funny little guys. Can I watch with you? Nah, it's boring, Dad, and I've already seen it. Next, that blue guy. He starts jumping. Watch. Now what? I say run. Start jumping. Make it cartoony. Now that red-headed character will sing. Watch. La 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 Then she starts dancing. La 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 These guys really are funny. And here are the super fast moves. That was funny. I gotta get going. That's all. You can rest. My dad went out. I'll get you, Tom Thomas. 
What are you doing over there, huh? Watching a movie. But why on my computer? Sorry, Professor. Yeah, will you forgive us? So how is it any good? Uh-huh. It's a super funny one. Really? Yeah. You see that boy there? He's gonna start waving his arms around like a maniac. <laughs> he also crows like a chicken. Cock-a-doodle-doo! And now the boy's gonna go in and chew paper. I can't do this all at once. Hmm. A movie. That's what we're watching here, right? People have always been interested in seeing what's going on outside of where they are. And with the invention of video transmission, it's now possible to see what's going on almost anywhere. Now, without leaving your home, you can see what's happening on another street or even in some far corner of the world. With the help of video calls, doctors can help their colleagues perform complicated surgeries. Teachers can give lessons by video, and scientists can take part in video conferences. With video, you can watch a live theater performance in another country. And even in outer space, an astronaut can feel right at home just chatting away with friends and family. And it's not just for astronauts, either. Now almost every tablet and phone here on Earth has video in it. Introducing Tom Thomas. Nice to meet you there, son. And I'm Professor Eugenius, so I guess you're also a friend of the Fixies. Yeah, only it's a secret. My friend, that's a secret the two of us share. And you know, keeping secrets is what friends do. Davey! The robot. Did I already tell you what I'm hoping you'll get me for my birthday present? <laughs> yes, honey. Only a thousand times or so. A Robotazoid R300 would just be the greatest. With Mega Vision, I want it. I really do. <sighs> I do. Well, tomorrow you'll find out. But now it's time to sleep, Tom Thomas. Wow, that is one great present. And we got Tom Thomas absolutely zero for his birthday. Uh, we're just terrible friends. So, how does this robot work? Okay, so let's give this a try, shall we? First, we'll take a walk. And how does he have any idea where the robot's going? I can tell you. One of the robot's eyes is a video camera. The robot sends the picture to the screen on the controller so the player can see where the robot is going. Yeah! And that's just one thing they know how to do. A robot is a smart machine that can do very difficult or dangerous work for humans. With its strong metal arms, a robot can move heavy objects or put together parts to build cars and other machines. Robots are often sent into outer space or to the bottom of the ocean to help scientists. There are also robots that can understand what people are saying. And robots that can talk and even make jokes, just like people. I've got it. Now let's turn you around. Ah! Uh, what was that? Uh, look. You know... <gasps> he destroyed him! No, let stop! You were playing with that, right? You think Tom will notice? Ugh. Oh, I know what you're doing all night. I'm off to bed. I'll get him to work. I'll stay up until I do. Simka, let's try and... No, we're gonna need some help.
makes things right. One, two, three. Inside we'll be all day and night. We fix things right. We live to keep on working. And work for us is fun. So we'll just keep on working. Cause our work's never done. And deep inside of gadgets, if you look when it's dark, you might just see us race around like multicolored sparks. One, two, three. Tenish. Inside will be Tenish. to fix what's wrong. Tenish. Till it runs strong. One, two, three. Tenish. Inside will be Tenish. all day and night. Tenish. We fix things right. One, two, three. Tenish. Inside will be Tenish. to fix what's wrong. Tenish. Till it runs strong. A robotozoid R300, I can't believe it! <sighs> well, happy birthday to you, Tom Thomas. I'm sorry, Tom Thomas. Last night, your robot, you know, I broke it. Dad, it works perfectly! Don't you see? I'm so proud of you. You fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't fix it at all. I tried everything. Oh, you want to tell me that the robot fixed itself? <laughs> what a joker. <laughs> Mom, Dad, thanks so much. I love it. And how about thanking us? I should have known it was you who fixed the robot. Happy birthday! Yay! The nightlight. They're very close. I can feel them. Ah, help me! Help me! Help me! <gasps> That's all. You've had enough monsters. It's not good to watch these kinds of movies before bed. Mom! Mom! Really? I'm not scared. Let me watch the end, would you? I told you, that's all. Well, good night, honey. <sighs> ah! Who's there? <sighs> They're very close. I feel them. enough electricity to go around. Hop. Everyone can probably remember walking into an empty room with the lights turned on. Or finding a TV on that nobody's watching. One little light or TV might not seem like much, but just imagine how many people are living on this Earth. Well, if everybody forgot to turn off the lights or TV when they weren't being used, the amount of wasted electricity would equal the amount of energy produced by a hundred power plants. And each of these power plants needs freight cars of coal or rivers of oil to keep running. And all that fuel has to be extracted and burned constantly. Now do you see how expensive burning a light bulb is for the Earth? So don't forget to turn off electrical appliances when you're not using them. It's so easy. Uh, who turned off the light? They're very close. I feel them. I feel them. I feel them. I... Look! What's up with him? I think he's playing sleep hockey. Looks like his position is left out. Ha ha. Anyway, he should get a penalty for wasting electricity. Oh. 
Monsters! Hey, what do you think we are? Hockey pucks? Nolik, Simka, forgive me. Who did you think we were? Mm, monsters. Huh. Well, I see how you could mistake Simka for one, but obviously not me. <laughs> Tom Thomas, what are you doing? Why are you sleeping with the light on? I was so dumb. I watched this monster movie on TV before bed. Now I'm scared to sleep without the light on. And that dumb old monster flick, why were you watching it? I felt like getting scared. Ah! You're great at getting scared. Keep quiet, or we'll wake up your mom and dad. How am I going to fall asleep now? Here's a good idea. You can use a nightlight. A nightlight is a little light that humans who don't like to sleep in the dark use in their rooms. The nightlight has a dim glow. That's because it works with a special kind of light bulb that uses very little electricity. These kinds of light bulbs are called energy efficient. <laughs> That's hard to say. <laughs> and you can find nightlights that use such low energy bulbs that they can work off of a battery. But you know there isn't a nightlight here. Huh. How would you get by without us? Tonight, I'm here to help you. I'm gonna be your nightlight. Look, right there. There's our lampshade. Thanks so much. You really are a friend indeed, Nolik. It was easy. Just go to sleep. Nolik, <sighs> do you know any good stories? I know one about a big meat grinder. Nah, no way. You'd better tell me a story about a nice kind fixie. Ah, I know a good one. And here's how it goes. Grandpoose was working inside of a very big clock. Actually, the clock wasn't that big. And I'm not sure if it was Grandpoose, but it was a clock, I think. The thermos. Where should I put it? Put what, Tom Thomas? Oh, it's you. Uh, my ice cream. Are you joking? Eat it! I can't. Tom Thomas, are you all right? <laughs> I'm fine. It's just that it's a present for my mom. Today is Mother's Day. Then you need to go give it to her. I can't. Dad and I are going to congratulate her together. What's your dad going to give her? I don't know, but when he gets back home, the ice cream will have melted. Then put it in the freezer. And what if Mom looks in there and finds it? The surprise will be ruined. <sighs> so where won't she find it? I'll tell you where. Inside of your dad's office. I don't see any place to hide it here. There's no freezer or anything. Why don't you take a look inside the box? Here's a thermos, but what good is it to me? Thermoses are for keeping things hot. The ice cream will melt in there. It will not. A thermos is made by putting one bottle inside of another. Between the bottles is an empty space, and that's the secret of a thermos. That space stops heat from getting out or in. So if there's hot tea inside, the empty space doesn't let the heat from the tea get out. And if there's ice cream in the thermos, the space stops the heat that's outside from getting in. And that's how a thermos keeps hot things hot and cold things cold. That's it. I'll go and play for a little while. He didn't even say thank you, did he, Nolik? Where are you, Nolik? I'm here! Where? In the thermos! What are you doing in there? I wanted to see that vacuum you talked about. Just don't touch anything. And don't even think of licking the foil. The ice cream's so cold, your tongue will stick to the metal. It's already stuck. What did you say? It's already stuck. <gasps> already stuck? Uh-huh. Try to unstick it. Well, is it working? Yeah! And what if you breathe onto the foil? <sighs> yeah! Hang on, Nolik. I'll go and get Tom Thomas. <sighs> Win! 
winter is a wonderful time of year. Holidays, presents, snowballs, skates, sleds. But the cold is also something serious that you shouldn't fool around with. The most important thing is to dress warmly. Cover your head with a hat and your throat with a scarf. Then there's less chance you'll catch a cold or get a sore throat. And to keep your hands from getting chapped, don't forget to wear gloves. And never walk around in wet shoes in the winter. That's a sure way to get yourself sick. And there's one more thing I want to tell you. It's great to have fun in the cold, but use your head. Don't eat snow or stick your tongue on metal fences, poles, or doorknobs. Your tongue can get stuck so strongly to the metal that it will be very hard to get off. I wish you all a glorious winter. Tom Thomas! Nolik's tongue got stuck! Where? In the thermos! Hurry! I'll explain everything later! Dad, you're already home? Mm-hmm. Dad, why are you taking my present? What do you mean, your present? I mean this one. Since when did it become yours? Oh, hi there. What's the fuss all about? Oh, it's nothing at all. I uh, have a huh? surprise for you. I want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. A thermos? How wonderful. Thanks so much. <laughs> Is there something in here? I don't think so. <laughs> Inside, there's a present from me. Vanilla ice cream. My favorite. And how did that end up in there? <laughs> Thank you so much, my sweeties. No, like, you got me so scared. Thank goodness you thought of turning into a screw inside of there. Uh-huh. Does your tongue hurt? Uh-huh. Do you think you can talk again? I can talk. Oh, that's good. We better hurry. We still need to go and wish our mother a happy Mother's Day. And you should, too. The toothbrush. Once I finish you, my top secret growth potion, I will create my own giant canine crew! And then I'll rule the... Whoa! Wow, this is super! You're better than a TV show. Oh yeah, it's fun, but it's gonna end badly. <laughs> Tom Thomas, get ready for bed. I'm going, Dad. But first, my secret recipe. We start with a bit of carboniterous. And now a little bit of bread and butterous. And finally, beer the fumarissa. Chusaka. Don't be afraid. Drink, my baby. And you'll grow ten times your size. What? It doesn't taste good? Oh, right. I forgot it needed stirring. This hypersonic mixer will do the trick. Tom Thomas, you shouldn't use what doesn't belong to you. That's your father's toothbrush. Ah! Hey, cut it out! You're acting crazy! <laughs> are a big boy, but your brain is smaller than Nolix. Why, thank you. Just go put the toothbrush back in its place. I'm like you never touched it. Nah, that's not right at all. Tom Thomas, what's up? I'm almost done, Dad. Simka, Nolik, please, I really need your help. No panicking. First, we need to understand what could have broken inside of there. An electric toothbrush is really simple, as long as you know these three parts the battery, the motor, and a very clever mechanism that connects the motor with the bristles. The whole secret to the toothbrush is right in there. That mechanism uses the spinning of the motor to make the bristles move very fast back and forth, from left to right, from right to left. And that's how it brushes your teeth. So what can we do about it? Here's what 
We do. First we take out the motor, then we take the gears out, and then the mechanism. How much time do we need to do that? One or two hours. What? No! Just listen here, Tom Thomas. You need to open up the battery compartment. Wait for me right here. These are your teeth. Well, I mean, they're not your teeth, but you get what I'm saying. Nowadays, we use a toothbrush to clean our teeth, but it wasn't always that way. The ancient Egyptians used a chewed stick to scrape their teeth, while the ancient Greeks rubbed their teeth with a rag. And the Vikings, well, who knows what they used? And then, only 200 years ago, an Englishman named William Addis came up with something better. He drilled holes into a meat bone, inserted bunches of bristles into them, and there you go, the toothbrush. And here's what I need to tell you all as a fixie, that is, as a master repairman. You need to make sure to brush your teeth often, especially after eating, or you'll be getting them repaired often at the dentist. Well, is something wrong with the mechanism? No, it's fine. Is the motor burned out? No. Then what's wrong with it? You're not gonna believe it, but the battery died. That's all? I know what to do. I'll put in new ones. <laughs> Your dad turned the toothbrush on. Looks like everything's fine. It's working. Ooh, way to go. Excellent. Your dad will never find out what kind of slop you mixed up with his brush. What slop? <laughs> How dare you, Nolik? How dare you refer to my mighty potion like this? Tom Thomas, somehow soap got all over my toothbrush. Can you explain that? Ay, ay, ay. Well, you got caught. What do you say now?